do a little devotion today to something for us to think about. So when you're reading the Bible, you need to make sure that you're reading the Bible. It's good to do some word studies, look up different customs and the culture at the time. But just take a look at little words sometimes that we, you know, just skip over. So let's take a look at Matthew chapter 27, Matthew 27, verse 34. This is when they put Jesus on the cross. The place of the skull. And they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. They gave him sour wine mixed with the gall or gall to drink. Hallelujah. So what is that gal? G-A-L-L. What is it? Do we even think about it? Do we just kind of look over that word? Then, you know, I don't know. I just gave him something to drink and, you know, and I've heard people teach, well, he just didn't want alcohol and he didn't want this sour vinegar. You know, I've heard people teach all kinds of stuff. But when I looked up the word, it means bile, especially animal bile. So what they're saying that they had mixed. Also, it has a different meaning. And I want to take a look at that. It means something bitter or severe. Bitterness of spirit. There's another word here. Rancor, R-A-N-C-O-R. It means bitter, rankling resentment or ill will, hatred or malice. Bitter, rankling resentment or ill will, hatred, malice. It also means bitterness of spirit and deep resentment. Now, what is rankling? Because rankling isn't a word that we typically use now. It means to continue to cause keen irritation or bitter resentment within the mind to fester and to be painful. So when you look this up, what they had mixed with the wine here was bitter resentment, a festering. So the last thing that they tried to do to him was affect his relationship with the father by getting him resentful, hatred, Malice toward the people, looking out at the crowd saying, you know, I may have healed you. you. You got delivered. You were fed, you know, by the fish and the loaves. He may have looked at the people and said, was it even worth it? They wanted him to start to think this way. They wanted him to think that what he had done was useless. They wanted him to be, his relationship to be affected with the father. Because if you end up just being bitter and resentful and full of hatred and malice in your heart, it affects your walk with God. And this was the last moment they wanted him to think that all this wasn't worth it. Hallelujah. Now, doesn't the enemy kind of do the same thing with us, with people? Even in ministry, you start thinking, you know, after all these years, I've ministered to all these people, and you still got some people that just like to make up lies about you. And you have the, these other pastors and other so-called leaders that sometimes just that get jealous of what you're doing. And so they try to ruin your reputation. And you figure, I've been doing this for so long. What was the point? Did I even make a difference? And it's that's not our goal is to make a difference. Our goal is to be obedient to the Father. And when we do what the Father wants us to do, we will make a difference in people's lives. But that's not our goal. They were trying to damage that relationship between the Son and the Father in those last moments. Has the enemy ever done anything to try to get you resentful? Where he just wants it to fester in your mind over and over. This is what they said. This is what they did. And it's hard to let that go. You've just been given some bitter wine and gall by the enemy. To try to get you to that place where it removes the joy from your life. It removes the peace from your life. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you can take your joy, then there's weakness, there's depression, there's just tiredness all the time. Life just is no longer fun. It's just, you, know, you have to get up and do what I have to do and just go to bed at night. And there's no enjoyment of what you're doing. That is the enemy trying to affect your relationship with the Father. Hallelujah. So who is it that you have to forgive today? Who is it in your life that tries to stir this resentment up? They'll come to you and say, well, they shouldn't have talked to you that way. What are you going to do about it? Stop being a doormat. Stop being a wimp. Don't allow these people to do all that. 
And that may be true, that we shouldn't be a doormat. We don't need to allow people to treat us bad. But if their motivation is just to stir you up and even once you've forgiven people, to bring it back up again so that you can be hatred, have hatred and malice in your heart again, that's not of God. Right? We need to stand up for ourselves, but we don't need to continue to hang on to those emotions and not forgive the people for what they have done. I've had to forgive many, many people. I've had to forgive parents and, and you know family members. But I think the hardest was having to forgive other pastors that you had a, a good relationship with that you trusted and you thought, you know, that once I'm in ministry, everything's going to be rainbows and butterflies and, you know, little skittles and you didn't realize that there's going to be pastors that had wrong motives, that wanted to use you for the gifts that you had, but then talk bad about you. And then if you ever tried to leave that ministry, then they'd really talk bad about you and even send out letters and tell people to have nothing to do with you to try to ruin your reputation. Now you have to forgive those people. Because if you don't forgive those people, it will cause that malice and that resentment in your heart and it will affect your relationship with the Father. Jesus was in the process and on the cross of fulfilling the Old Testament covenant and then making the new covenant for us. Well, we now had access to the Father through him. We no longer had to go to other people. We could now go to the Father ourselves for forgiveness. We can now go to the Father ourselves for wisdom and direction. We didn't have that before that. He was in that process, so they were trying to stop all that. So, in your life, on a daily basis, before you go to bed at night, you need to say, Lord, is there something in my heart today? Have, was I offended? Was I hurt by somebody? Is there someone I need to forgive? It doesn't say that you have to call all these people up and tell them. It just means that you need to forgive them. Now, sometimes the Lord may say, you know, what you said out loud to them was wrong. You need to let them know. But oftentimes it was in your heart. It was in your mind, what you were thinking and what you were feeling toward these people. And you need to forgive them on a daily basis. Don't allow that to build up. Don't allow that to, to interfere with your relationship with the Father. Because if you allow too much of this gall in your life, it will affect you. It will make you dull where you don't even really care if you go to church anymore. I'll just stay home and watch it online. I don't need to go and be around these people anymore. You know, you just, you don't want to go pray for people. You don't want to do what God's called you to do because you've gotten to the place where you're now hardened of heart because you have resentment and offense in your life that you have not forgiven. It was an attack of the enemy and its purpose was to bring wine, sour wine, and gall. Hallelujah. So, Hopefully this gives you something to think about. You've probably thought of some people, probably thought of some things in your life that where you just need to spend some time with God and say, Lord, I forgive them. Do this on a daily basis. Don't allow these things to build up in your life. You need to let the hurt go on a daily basis. Hallelujah. You need to get free and stay free. Amen. Be blessed.